Hi, I'm Nola Stewart. Welcome to Conservation Through Having Smaller Families. This PowerPoint presentation is in three parts. Each part is a standalone section. Part A Money. Are there more people on Earth than is helpful for the planet? Most probably, yes. World population is increasing. Better medical care means the people now live longer. Babies which once might have died as infants now live to produce families of their own. Each person has needs which the earth must supply. Food, clothing, shelter and energy supplies are the basic needs. Each person also has wants which the earth supplies. Luxury items and collector's items are some of these. Money is usually the key to these things. But where does the money come from? Trade existed before there was money. Money was developed as a convenient way of selling and buying things. But money by itself is useless without things to spend it on. And money cannot be circulated unless it is backed by production from the ground, for example mining, or from the soil, for example agriculture, or from the sea, for example fishing, or from the bush, for example forestry. So money has to be backed by production. If a government prints money for nothing, it will cause inflation because there is more money but not more goods to buy with it. Inflation is also caused when people get the same money for producing less or when they get more money without producing more. Whatever its value, money represents the productivity of the earth. Think about where your money comes from. Some people have jobs which are directly related to the earth's provision. Miner, fisherman, forester, farmer. The jobs of others depend on the raw materials which the earth supplies. Builder, machinist, factory worker, metal worker. Still more people have work in the service industries related to goods produced from the earth. Driver, mechanic, seaman. Some people's salaries come from the taxes which are paid by others. Teacher, parliamentarian, public servant, nurse. Some people depend on the work of others for their financial support. Child, housewife, pensioner, student. When we trace our money back to where it came from originally, we will find it is from the productivity of the earth. And what will we exchange it for? We will spend it on goods and services, all of which flow from the productivity of the earth. Each child needs the support of earth for all its life. It needs some land to be under production to give it food and clothes. Trees will be cut down to provide housing, furniture, books, food packaging. Each child also needs a source of energy for cooking, lighting and to produce manufactured things. The parents income and later the child's income will provide its needs and wants. But if we trace that income back to its origin, it is the earth that supports the child. And every child, every day, 365 days a year for the whole of its life. Some people have a small amount of financial support, while others have a lot. 
since money represents the productivity of the earth this means that a small part of earth supports some people 1% for half the population while a comparatively large part supports the rest 99% for the other half to meet the needs of all the world's poor would require several more planets like the Earth. 20% of Earth's resources go to the underdeveloped countries and societies, for example rural China. 80% of Earth's resources go to developed countries, for example USA, Japan and industrial China but 75% of Earth's population is in the underdeveloped areas and only 25% in the developed areas. So it can be worked out that 12 children in an underdeveloped country use about as much of the Earth's resources as one child in a developed country and it would take 36 children in an underdeveloped country to use as much as a small Western family of three children, for example. The Earth's resources are running out, mostly to developed places to keep the people at a high living standard, but also to countries like China and India that are raising their living standards, which is accelerating resource depletion. Since 1986, Earth's population has been using renewable resources like forests and fish faster than they are being replenished by nature. What can we all do about it to prevent suffering by future generations? If we choose to have smaller families, this would help to save the Earth's resources and its beauty. A reduction of one child in a developed country is equivalent to a cutback of 12 children in an underdeveloped country in saving Earth's resources. Are you planning a family? And are you conservation minded? To cut back on your planned family by even one or maybe two children helps to save Earth's resources in the future and is a very conservation-minded thing to do. Note, the only way of population control endorsed by the author is a voluntary, mutually agreed reduction in family size. Such a reduction is put forward as a responsible course of action in order to care for nature. Part B. Forests what is a tree? A tree is for me, and me, and me. Uh-oh. I say that a tree is for me. So now, why do we need to value a tree? Read on and see. Trees, like other plants, capture energy from the sun. This energy is stored within the body of the tree. The energy can be released as heat when firewood is burnt. Many trees are cut to use as fuel in the poorer countries. Tree roots collect mineral salts from the ground. These minerals become part of the structure of the tree. When leaves and branches fall and rot, they return minerals to the topsoil in humus. Forests are cleared for agriculture to use the good soil which trees make. Tree trunks are made of strong fibres, which is why trees have many uses. Timber goes into building houses, fences, etc. More timber is used for making furniture. And more trees are used to make paper and cardboard for books, newspapers, packaging, etc. So three main reasons why trees are cut are energy, agriculture and wood fibre. 
Living trees provide us with other incalculable economic benefits. For example, they give us shade. Also, oxygen and take carbon dioxide from the air, storing carbon in the tree itself and in soil. Forests contribute to weather cycles which bring rain. Tree roots hold soil and prevent erosion. Tree roots also act like a large sponge holding water in the soil. This water is released slowly after rain has fallen. To give a clear, clean supply of fresh water for springs, rivers and dams. Trees are home to many forms of wildlife. Mangroves provide a breeding place for fish and other forms of life in coastal waters. The medical properties of some trees have been known for centuries. And many modern drugs can be extracted from trees, especially those in tropical forests. So there are many good reasons why a living tree is useful to people and animals. However, the forests of the earth are being cut down faster today than ever before. To supply our needs for fuel, good soil and timber products. It is people who use all these things. Now that we have improved medical care through health education, drugs, injections, surgery, etc., the world population is increasing. And so there are more people in the world than ever before. More people, fewer trees. What can we do? What about reforestation, planting new trees? Reforestation is not keeping up with forest destruction and the newly planted trees are usually different from the types being cut. As forests are cleared, many types of trees are in danger of extinction and with them would go the many forms of wildlife which depend on their own types of trees. Reforestation can supply some of our future needs for fuel and wood fibre. But without the natural forests, we would lose thousands of plant and animal species. What about the national parks, areas set aside to preserve nature? National parks are only small areas because people want most of the land for other purposes. National parks are important to many people because of the relaxation that the natural environment gives. They are also very valuable as refuges for wildlife. However, as the population grows, there is pressure against setting aside reserves which are large enough to safeguard nature. Countries with a high standard of living, for example Japan, Australia, USA, use up forests faster than countries having a low standard of living because they use more timber and agricultural products and more energy than those with a lower living standard. Forests in one country may pay for the high living standard of another country since trade between countries includes timber and agricultural products. What about ways of conservation such as wasting less, cutting down on the use of timber products, recycling etc. It's true that if people are willing to buy timber products there will be someone who is willing to sell them. And the more timber that can be sold, the more trees will be cut down to sell. 
This is the basis of employment in the timber industry. So even small efforts at conserving timber can help save trees. Does this mean the supplier of timber products may suffer? Yes. It means that the consumer now has a slightly lower standard of living because he uses less. And it means that the supplier gets a little less money from selling timber products. So he too has a lower living standard. In fact, three groups benefit from timber sales. The seller, landowner or government, the employee or worker in the timber industry, and the buyer of timber products. But if we continue to use up forests, we will run out of trees, jobs and timber products. So these three ways of saving forests are useful. They are reforestation, national parks, conservation. But as population increases there are more consumers of timber products so more trees will be cut down. So it comes to this. Our high population is making demands on Earth's ecosystems that are too great and that is why the forests are disappearing. We were not responsible for our own existence but we are responsible for the number of children we add to the population. If couples choose to have small families, two or fewer than two children, then this will help reduce pressure on forests. And future generations won't miss out on understanding the value of trees, forests and wildlife. Part C. People More than 10% of all the people who have ever lived are alive today and depend on the earth for resources. World population is increasing. It may pass 9 billion by the middle of the 21st century. The main cause of population increase is better medical care. More babies survive to adulthood and produce families of their own. If we accept modern medical care, and we all do, then we must also accept the responsibility that goes with it. To have only a small number of children to counterbalance our improved survival rate. Statistics vary, but it has been said that 2.2 children per family would keep the world's population at its present level given the medical care available to us today. There are many indications that the world population is now too high. So to reduce it, two, one or zero children in a family are responsible choices for married couples to make. Secondly, in a country having good medical care a person may live to about 70 years. The earth must supply all his needs every day of his life for 70 years. If a person becomes a parent when he is about 20 years old, then earth must support parent and child together for 50 years or so. If he becomes a parent later, for example at 30, Earth supports parent and child together for a shorter time. So having children later in married life means Earth does not have to support so many people at once. Why is it important to talk now about having smaller families and about having children later in married life? There are many reasons why we can say Earth's population is too high and now is the time to bring it down. The first reason is food. Each person needs food to live. 
many people will need a large amount of food to live. Whether we grow our own food or whether we buy food grown by others, a certain area of earth is under agriculture to give us our daily food. Earth's population is getting bigger but earth is not getting any bigger. When food runs out in certain places there is widespread suffering because there are more people to suffer. And the ability of rich nations to help out is reduced as their own population's requirements increase. The second reason is the disappearance of the forests. Each person needs timber products. Many people will need a large quantity of timber products. The forests are being cut down to supply people with timber products, firewood and good agricultural soil. Trees grow slowly. Natural regrowth and tree plantations are not keeping pace with the amount of forest destroyed. People need forests. They contribute to our needs for fresh air, clean water and the beauties and variety of nature. So the disappearance of the world's forests shows that the earth is already overpopulated. A third reason we can say the earth is overpopulated is the disappearance of wildlife. Some are hunted for food, others for fur, feathers, tusks, horns or just for sport. As long as there is a market for these animal products there will be those who will kill wildlife to supply the market. The increasing number of people who fill shops and marketplaces are the ones who buy wildlife products. Also many types of animals are getting fewer in number by destruction of their place to live, in particular the forests. In a few years the only evidence of some living things may be found in books, zoos and museums. Another reason we can say the world is overpopulated is the short world supply of meat such as beef. A fixed amount of sun's energy reaches earth each day. A small percentage only of this solar energy is captured by green plants. Some of this energy helps the plant grow and stay alive. A small amount only goes on to an animal that eats it. And a smaller amount to the person who eats animal meat. So a fixed amount of sun's energy can only give a fixed amount of meat from a given land area. Now tropical forests in some countries are being cut down to raise cattle to supply the market in developed countries which can no longer satisfy their own demand for meat. Increasing dependence on nuclear energy is another reason that we may say the Earth's population is too great. Each person needs a source of energy for lighting, cooking, heating, cooling, transport and to help in industrial manufacture of goods. As population grows, energy needs get bigger and bigger. The sun is the Earth's main energy source and supplies us with a fixed daily ration of low power energy. In ages past, the sun's energy was captured by green plants living in prehistoric swamps. The fossil fuels, coal, gas and oil, formed from such prehistoric living material. Fossil fuels are a bank of solar energy which we use today for our main energy needs. They are a medium power energy source and give the high living standard of some countries. But what happens when the bank of fossil fuels finishes? Will we be left with our low daily ration of solar energy and a high world population? many of whom are used to a high standard of living requiring a large amount of energy. The energy crisis is often given as a reason for turning to nuclear power, a high power energy source. 
but nuclear power stations can make materials which may be used for atomic weapons. And radioactive wastes from reactors stay dangerous for very long periods of time. A sensible way is to reduce world population so that our daily solar energy ration is enough for our needs. Alternative safe low power sources can keep a few people at a high living standard, but not many people at a high living standard. We may also look at the question of unemployment as too many people rather than not enough jobs. All jobs depend originally on the productivity of the earth in mining, forestry, fishing, agriculture. Governments may decide how existing resources will be used and shared, for example through jobs. But a government cannot create new resources to give jobs as population increases. If a resource is used up, jobs depending on it will also run out. Unemployment is increasing worldwide, so we may say there are now too many people for available jobs. We can also say there are too many people in the world because the percentage of poor people is increasing and the gap between rich and poor is widening. Developed societies with 25% of the world's people use 80% of world resources. Less developed societies have 75% of the people but 20% of the resources. The price of a manufactured item is cost of raw materials plus labour costs for making, transporting and selling it plus profit. Underdeveloped countries must sell a lot of raw materials to buy back a small quantity of manufactured goods from developed countries. Poverty in many countries is maintained by a flow of resources from less developed to more developed areas and as resources flow to more developed areas people migrate in the same direction seeking jobs based on those resources. More than half the world's population now lives in urban areas many in very poor conditions. One person in a developed society uses as much of the world's resources as 12 people in an underdeveloped area. People in poor societies need to have smaller families because they do not earn much by selling their raw materials so there is less to go around and if they have more children population goes up faster and so does the destruction of nature. People in rich societies need to have smaller families because most resources go to such places causing a very big impact on nature. A final reason for saying there are too many people is that it takes time to make a change. It takes time to bring about change that would result in a voluntary decrease in world population. If world resources run low when population is high, then we can expect an increase in crime, warfare, famines and other kinds of suffering. To choose only a small family at this stage in history is to contribute more than children to tomorrow's world. It is to ensure that there will be enough resources available and the natural world can be protected. This talk is based on the booklet Conservation Through Having Smaller Families at www.population.org.au. Thank you.